Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh, honey. Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15 percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. This is Define You Radio with Valencia Griffin Wallace. Classes in session tonight with Kay Sanders. Are you ready to unapologetically unleash your bold and define your life, money, and business? Define You Radio class is in session with host the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace, brings you the stories behind the glory. Class is now in session. Welcome again, guys. I'm your host, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Thank you for joining me in this special two part interview on Define You Radio From Struggle to Strategy to Success with Kay Sanders. Kay is a nationally recognized business coach consultant, and best-selling author. She used her experiences and struggles to inspire others to make a difference. She's passionate about helping coaches, consultings, and other professionals grow their businesses by using the right systems and strategies. She has been featured on CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, and other media And now she is on Define You Radio to share her story of how she went from struggle to strategy to success. I am going to kick off the show with a quote from Unknown. You may see me struggle, but you will never see me quit. Let's hear from the woman who didn't quit part one from struggle to strategy with Kay Sanders of KaySanders.com. Enjoy. Kay, welcome to Define You Radio. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. Hopefully I can provide you guys with also with some great value. Well, I know when we talked on the phone, it was very interesting, and I got a lot from that conversation. So why don't you tell the audience just a little bit about you so they could kind of get a familiar and get a, a feel for who you are? Okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, Well, I'm from Germany, so if anyone is wondering where this weird accent is coming from, now you know. I came to the States uh, 11 years ago in 2006, and uh, I came here with my my son, Darian, and my now ex-husband. He just kind of decided to leave us two months after we got here uh, now, but um, I've been just, you know, trying to, you know, make my living here, and uh, I actually became a citizen, too, so I can't even go back to Germany no more. And, uh, yeah, I mean, now I'm actually a business coach working from home, so I can get to spend some time with my my son and don't have to work for anyone else no more. So that's my, my story in short. <laughs> and a very interesting story it is. And I know part one, we're kind of going to get into your backstory. So I want to ask you, what have you struggled with? What What is that backstory to who Kay Sanders is now? Well, you, you might want to refine your story. What did I not struggle with? <laughs> it doesn't matter what you ask. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, uh, like I just mentioned, I mean, my ex, he, he was in the military, and he left us two months after we got here. I mean, being so far away from family, I mean, I had no one. I had nothing. I was just like, it was just me and my son and my ex. He was, uh, how do I put that? Uh, he was the devil. And he really tried to destroy me. He harassed me. He did all kind of things just to try to make my life miserable. He was trying to deport me. But the good thing is, uh, the good thing was that I had my 10-year visa, so he couldn't just get rid of me that easy. And I didn't want to go back to Germany. I mean, I always, uh, back in Germany, they were always saying, you know, like America, it's it's the land of the, the big opportunities and yada, yada, yada. And I wanted to go to school. I wanted to go to school for IT, for computers and stuff, and I wouldn't have been able to do that in Germany. So I decided I really wanted to stay here, but it was such a big struggle because, like I said, my ex, 
he put me through hell. Then, I mean, my son, he was two at that time. So single mom, you know, without any family, without any support system, without knowing my way around where I was at. I mean, I went from a tiny town to a huge city and, you know, everyone was driving crazy over here. And, uh, you know, I didn't know nothing. I thought whatever I did in Germany would count here. But, you know, b the big awakening was that nothing I did in Germany was accepted here. I was a nail tech in Germany, had my own business for two years, wasn't accepted here. Uh, the schooling I did, I thought I would get a good job. Well, it wasn't accepted here either. So I decided I wanted to go to school. And uh, they were giving me a hard time about that because of the schooling I did in Germany wasn't really accepted. But then, thank God, I, I was able to go with University of Phoenix, just taking an English language test, and I was able to start. But it was really hard learning the, the American language. I mean, my English was pretty good, but I still I, I wasn't proficient with it. And then I had to find a job. I had to, you know, get adjust to the American lifestyle and everything. And it was very tough. And I'm in El Paso, so bilingual here is English and Spanish. And I didn't speak Spanish. I mean, I'm bilingual in English and German, but not Spanish. So I had a hard time getting a job there. So it was like all over, you know, it took me a very long time to really get to where I'm at today. I had a lot of struggles, a lot of downs to the point um, if it wouldn't be for my son, I don't think I would be having this conversation with you right now. I don't think I would be like 10 feet under, basically. And uh, it was really my mom and my son who really kept me going. And, um, but yeah, it was, it was very, very challenging to the point that uh, I remember one day I was really laying on my kitchen floor. Um, it was like already a few years after I was here, and I was so depressed that I couldn't even make it to work. I was working uh, on, on the, for, the, um, for the military base as an admin. I actually was a pretty good job, and uh, but I was laying on the floor, and I was like, I mean, is there all that is to life? I mean, shouldn't it be easier? Shouldn't it be, you know, better? And that's when I realized that, you know, something has to change. I mean, I can't, I can't live like this no more, and I wanted to have a good life for my son. I wanted to, you know, be my own boss again. I was so sick and tired of being treated badly by my, by my bosses, by my, the managers and stuff. I mean, they never really accepted me for who I am and I'm German so I'm I'm kind of like the go-getter kind of person and I don't just sit around and wiggle my wiggle my thumbs and wait for stuff to just you know fall in my lap and uh, I had a really hard time with that and I mean I don't know if you've ever been around Germans it, it, the German language sounds very rude and I've had the really the big problem where people were telling me you sound rude I'm like I'm not rude it's just how I talk so <laughs> but overall it was it was a very interesting journey just to get to where I'm at today. It it sounds like it. And I, I kind of want to pivot almost and go back a little bit because going through that shock of life one way and then your husband leaves you. And I know a lot of women can understand that, you know, that abrupt change in life. What was like the immediate effect? Was it shock? Was it depression? Was it, I can't deal with this now? What was your immediate reaction to him leaving? I mean, in a way, now that I think about it, in a way I was relieved because he, he was just horrible. And I don't even know why I came with him to the States because I kind of had that feeling that it's not going to last, but he had me so brainwashed that, you know, I, I went with him. I probably would have went with him to the moon if he would have asked or if he would have made me, but I was just so brainwashed. But, you know, the initial thing was like, what the heck just happened? I didn't know what to do. And, but it was, it was really just shock. And then it was just really that anger because the way he left me and the thing that he put me through, I, I couldn't even really stay in the whole stage of, being shocked, it was just like, oh, my God, what am I going to do now? And then I got more mad because he was really trying to destroy me, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to let him do that. I mean, I lost a lot of weight. That's a really great way to lose weight, I'm telling you. I lost like 20 pounds in, in two months <laughs> or three months, so that was a great thing. But it was really just shock, unbelief, and then I was scared out of my mind. I'm like, what am I going to do now? where I'm going to go, how, how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to, you know, survive here. I mean, I knew I didn't want to go back, but I'm like, how I'm going to do that? I mean, I was on the phone with my mom like almost every day and, you know, I mean, I couldn't eat. I couldn't really sleep. I, I was like, what am I going to do now? So it was really just a shock and the, the, this being totally scared that what I'm going to do now. So that was like more my, my whole reaction to that. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> wow. I I couldn't. 
imagine an abrupt change like that because it hasn't happened to me, but I've, I've had abrupt changes, just not in that way. And I know you kind of, as a mom, you almost go on autopilot because you can't necessarily fall apart because at the end of the day, you have to take care of your son. Yeah. So when we, when I talk about, you know, hitting quote unquote rock bottom, how long did you stay in that, what I call that, that rock bottom that hit the wall mode? Like how long did it take for you to snap out of it? It was a while. I mean, it wasn't that I stayed in rock bottom for very long, but it was like I kind of stuck my head out of out of that little hole again, and I kind of went back in. So it was like an up and down, up and down for many, many years. Uh, like the, I mean, we got divorced. I mean, I was trying to push out the divorce for about a year and a half, almost two years, mainly because I wanted to have that support because he was military, so I at least had the, the health insurance, you know, and he had to pay and all that stuff. So I had some kind of cushion there, uh, but then – it was like his harassment was really almost destroying me. And then it got better again and it went down again. It's like it was never to the point where I stayed in that hole, but I was close to that hole for many, many years, actually. And then, um, I mean, I tried, like, uh, you know, different business opportunities, network marketing stuff, trying to, you know, get out of that. And like, I kept moving forward. I kept moving forward because I knew I wanted to do more. Um, so it was like, I mean, the entire last what, 10 years were really, really bad. Uh, when I hit really rock bottom was that day when I was laying on my kitchen floor. I had really bad depressions because I also had surgeries and no one really cared. I mean, I had to get my gallbladder removed because of the stress I had with my ex-husband and uh, to the point that my gallbladder went totally bye-bye and uh, had to have emergency emergency uh, uh, surgery. As soon as I woke up, I'm like, look, dude, I need to go. You need to let me go. You need to let re- release me. So I had to because I had to take care of my son. I wasn't gonna leave him with my with my ex. So as soon as I woke up, they let they released me, and then I was really at home. And you know, at that point, I actually had I was unemployed at that point for a couple of, couple of months, and I was just at home. And I'm like, I, I don't I don't know what to do. I mean, no one really cared. My my son, my he was four years old at that time, he had to take care of me. He had to help me go grocery shopping. He had to help me do laundry and all of those things. And I was like, wow, I mean, if I would die right now, no one would even, even care. I mean, how, who, no one would even know. And that's when when I really hit rock bottom the first, or well, the second time actually after my ex left me. And then the second time was, you know, about a year or two years later, when I was just laying on my kitchen floor. I mean, I had tried their building different businesses, didn't really know what was going on. My ex was still harassing me and all of those different things. And I just like, I don't want to live like this no more. And then uh, I got out of it because I started working at a PTSD treatment facility 2012. And that's when I realized that, hey, I have something that's called PTSD and depression and anxiety and all of those different fun things that I had no name for it before. I just like, I mean, I knew I had like social anxiety and all of those things didn't really uh, always had like chest pain, feeling sick, dizzy whenever I went somewhere. And I'm like, okay, what the heck is going on with me? I'm maybe I'm sick or something like that. But then I realized, hey, there's an anxiety attack. And it was not until 2012 when I actually realized that and that's when my life really changed because working at that PTSD treatment facility, I learned different modalities, different healing, uh, um, uh, holistic modalities. So I got into Reiki, I got into meditation, and uh, you know all these different holistic things, affirmations and whatever. And that has really helped me. And that's so basically from 2006 to 2012, that was all just basically in the pit, <laughs> if you can say so. It was always like an up and down, up and down. My eye was not until 2012 when I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm glad you did get to the light. And I applaud you for not giving up because I think a lot of women or people in general, they just give up because they Mm -hmm. feel like they should go from rock bottom to mountain high. But you went through the process because you took one step at a time. How how did yeah. you do that? Like, what was that driving force that one step, I got to get it together? 
my son. And also, I didn't want to let my, my ex win, so it was more like that, <laughs> ha, I show you. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, like I said, his main thing was he wanted to literally destroy me. He even told me that he's not going to get a job because he doesn't want to pay me child support. He literally told me he wants to destroy me. And I'm like, nope, not going to happen. And it was really, see, when, when I was pregnant, I made a promise to my son. or Well, I did, at that point, I didn't know that I was going to have a son. But I made a promise to my unborn child that he's going to have a great life. And, well, you know, that didn't really happen at first, but, you know, he was really my driving force because I'm like, I, I can't leave him. I can't do that to him. I mean, he deserves to have a good life. He doesn't deserve for me to leave too because, I mean, there were days when I was, like, very scared that if something would just, one little thing would happen, it would really tip me off, and then I would do something really, really stupid that I wouldn't, you know, maybe take my life or something. So I had those moments, but then I always looked at my son. I'm like, I can't do that to him. I'm all he got left. You know, and I knew there is more to life. There should be more to life for me. And, you know, just knowing that, knowing that I have not found my purpose yet in life, that's really what kept me going. And like I said, you know, I want to give my son a good life. I want to have a good life. I mean, I figured, you know, after everything that I've been through, I'm a good person. You know, I deserve much better than, you know, what I've been experiencing ever since I, have you know, came here. And, you know, just those thoughts really was what would help me, what kept me going. I mean, my mom, she always was in my corner. She always kind of, like, you know, helped me. Uh, I mean, I called her, like, you know, all time, you know, all day of the night. I mean, all um, day, morning, you know, night, whatever. I I called her, like, so many times, and she really, you know, had my corner. And she was already had, already, always had my back and, you know, kept me going. But, yeah, it was really my son that, you know, he was my driving force, and he still is my big why. That's why I'm still doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm still fighting because I have a big vision that one day I want to travel the world with him. I want to give him the life that I want him to have. Well, that I, – I love the, the back story, and I can't wait until we get a chance to do part two where you could actually tell us how you went from – there to where you are today. So as we close out part one of your backstory, I wanted to ask you, what one tip would you give to a woman or man or someone going through a similar situation? What one tip would you give them? Um, I would say don't give up. If you are in a situation that you think you can't get out of, go and get into personal development. That's what saved my life. You know, learning from people like Tony Robbins and, you know, Bob Proct and all of those big gurus and, you know, really working on myself, discovering, you know, who I am and what I am capable of. And, you know, that really was, is what helped me, what saved my life. Because, I mean, I keep telling everyone, I keep telling my son that anything in life is possible. No matter what life situation you're in, no matter, I mean, I have chronic pain, and you know what, it didn't let, I didn't let that stop me. So I believe that no matter what situation you're in in life, you can get out of it. Yes, it is a lot of work. Yes, it, you know, there might be, you know, tears and pain and, you know, sacrifices, but you do deserve to live an amazing, amazing life. So don't give up. Look for the answers. Look for help. You know, work with a coach, work with a mentor, or anyone that can help you break through whatever it is that you're going through. But go after your goals. I mean, you deserve it. So don't give up. Wow, what a powerful interview. Talk about from struggle to strategy. Make sure you stay connected with the show on Define You Radio's Facebook page, or ValenciaGWallace.com so you can know when part two, Strategy to Success with Kay Sanders is available. With that being said, guys, have a great week. But think about what one thing did you learn tonight you can apply to your life? Make sure you let us know. Class is officially over. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers. Pizza. Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to Metro PCS. Stop by Metro PCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require a port and a number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. 
When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is, we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require reporting of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions.